Hello there. I'm Aaron. This is Johnny. That's Jordan. That's Jeremy. We're Okie Dokie. We're here at 91.1 WNXP in Nashville, Tennessee, a home we love. Thank you very much. Here we go. song's called Are You Up. Wow. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. There's only three. This song's called Are You Up, John. Yeah, it's song number two. Oh, Got it. Man. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah. Thanks, everybody, for being here. You know you are. A camera is a place. A place is in a camera. Hug in your heart. Yeah. 
so much. That was a new song from Okie Dokie. Wow. Here's another new song. There was an important phone call, but we'll forgive it. Hello? I hope it was my mom. I love you, mom. I love your mom too, buddy. Not that. That sounded weird. I'm sorry. Everyone should love my mom. Give it up for Amy. This is Johnny. That's Jordan. This is Jer. I'm Aaron. Thank you so much. This is our last song. <clears throat> Aaron's mom. Thanks, mom.
Thank you. It's been good to be here. Good night. Good afternoon. Goodbye. Welcome to the Sonic Cathedral, part of 91.1 WNXP here in Nashville. Okie dokie. Our neighbors are friends, but first time guests here in the Sonic Cathedral. What's up, guys? Howdy. Thanks for having we're us. We're really nervous. We're, we're, oh, so, we're shaking. Yeah. Palm sweating. I can see them from here. No, but really, can you introduce yourselves? And uh, yeah, thanks for being up here to play some songs. You do it. I'm Johnny. I'm Jordan. I'm Jeremy. I'm Aaron. Hello. Oh, awesome. Well, that's all of us. That's it. We aren't here, hiding anyone. The gang's all here. Yeah. It's a whole story. Yeah. Well, thanks for playing some new songs up here uh, in advance of your Basement East show. One of my favorite venues to see bands, period. But it should be a fun time, local hometown show. I think you last played, what, 6th and Peabody, that outdoor space. I was at that. Yes, we did that. That was super fun. Thank you, Walter. Love you, Walter. It felt like a sort of like coming out party for when we thought the pandemic was over and then we're not sure. And But it was outside and it was fun. It was pretty crazy. I saw multiple hugs and multiple laughs and lots of smiles. It was wild. <laughs> lots of laughs. insane. I wore shorts for the first time in like five years and I haven't since because it was a bad idea. Oh. But that was my weird getting out of COVID lockdown decision. Trying so, new things, seeing what sticks. Shorts did not do, stick. I will never do it again. Okay. Ever. Well, I'm sorry you. to those that were there. There was like 300 of you that saw my knees and I'm sorry. <laughs> we live and we learn. Mm-hmm. And you guys probably have learned a lot about being a band in a pandemic, but you did release music last year. The newest record, I think, dropped in October, and it was our first record of the week when we started our station. So that's cool. We should be getting your trophies in the mail any any time now. Uh, but tell me about the arc of the, you know, the, the timeline, I guess, the writing, the recording, the finishing that, and how the pandemic altered maybe your plans for that newest release. Well, we started it probably a year before it came out, maybe a year and a half. And we we uh, wrote some songs at the time. Uh, I was still living with Sam from the Weeks, and we, me and Aaron and Sam, just goof off and wrote a few songs. And uh, then we, you know, we've done so many collaboration songs that we thought it'd be fun to do a whole album. So instead of mixing the songs with other people on them, we thought we'd record the songs and then send them to random people to mix. Uh, So we didn't really get it. We got a say in it. We got to at least be like, we hate that or wow, you're great. Um, But yeah, that was really fun. So we we sent the first two songs to Yuki Matthews and he plays in like the Shins and Deep Sea Diver and a couple other cool groups. And and, uh, he just knocked it out of the park. So we just kept rolling with it and kept finding interesting folks to fill the gaps over the course of a year which was really nice and like was the thought there okay let's just see how it flows or was there a cohesion even a an an interest there or just like you wanted everything to be solid and good and unique to whoever collaborated i think we were just curious you know i was like i wonder what that would be like and then it could have gone really bad and we're like don't do that. But then, like the shorts, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like so those are a bad idea. But yeah. sending songs to other people is nice because sometimes I think you're so used to it. So you've heard a song for like sixty to eighty hours or some crazy stuff like that before it's done, and by then you just hate it. So it's nice to send it to someone and be like, "You're in charge." You know, it's kind of like the last one to touch it. You know, has to keep it kind of thing. If it's something you don't want, you're like, "You touch it last and then run away," kind of thing. So kind of felt like that, except we knew we were with people that actually cared and were really good mm-hmm. and weren't like questionable i suppose so it was really fun it was like christmas like we'd get a mix and we'd be like oh my god we sound like that that's crazy it was also cool to approach the whole producer concept which most bands i think kind of rush into or at least i feel that way and um for me i didn't want to rush into that either so it was a very cool process and idea to look for producers multiple um, we gave everyone two songs and everyone was from a group that we already loved. Um, so that was really exciting and it kind of took the weight off of at least my head to be like, one person's going to make us happy. Like, <laughs> we're going to fight. <laughs> Maybe. Um, no, it was just like uh, smooth and the decisions they made were incredible. One of my favorite turnarounds was um, Chris Taylor from Grizzly Bear who I love, and uh, he crushed it, and uh, Dave Harrington as well, Carl Brommel, um, Philip Nikolic, it was just uh, Jeremy Clark right here, did did them as well, so. Hi, that's me. Hey, Jerry. 
Jer mixes all of our stuff. So that was really the first time that we let things out of Jer's hands, which was also kind of an interesting aspect of stuff. So that's why the other ones aren't as good, you know? That's not true. <laughs> no. Did it make you nervous no, then to be like, okay, more hands in this pot, cool? No, not really. It just meant less work for me. <laughs> there, <laughs> facts. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm going with this angle, though, like giving your work over to somebody else, but multiple someones. Did that make you as a band and as songwriters care to do that in the future? Maybe produce other people's work, especially people that you care about and have collaborated with before? We love every aspect of collaboration. We think it's an essential process. Um, so there's, you know, there's like 50 something people that have played with us in a live setting. There's like 80, 90 that have been on the records Johnny is always helping people out. Jeremy's always helping people out. I would record more uh, if I could. Jordan makes drums and records for everyone. So it's not really like a thing that we stray away from mm. ever. Um, so, yeah, it was an interesting process to uh, just sort of step up into like, you don't know us, we know you, we know us. Let's see what you can do with this. And... I told Carl Brommel, I was like, I love your brain and I want to see what our brains look like, like this. And I'm excited. It's going to be sick. And uh, that was the treatment and I think what we got out of the whole process. So, um, you know, uh, then here comes the year off and all that stuff. So it kind of became like, what's next? How do we collaborate further? And I had kind of made a joke or a statement at some point where I was kind of like, you know, everything's run by an algorithm and that's kind of trash because you're never going to see us on a playlist with like Tyler, the creator, who mm -hmm. I love. You know, you'll never see that probably. So then that kind of spun into we'll do covers now. That's a great way to sort of still open up this collaborative thing if you really focus on making the song just totally different. You know what I mean? Because um, there is a world in which you do something, you put it out there, and then the person you're emulating or, you know, throwing respect to kind of just high fives. You know, mm -hmm. somewhere you may never see it, but that is collaborating, is putting art out that matters to you for the name of other people that might find it. So, yeah, it's been very cool. That is cool. And actually, credit to Carl, he told me about your band and working <laughs> on the record last year before I ever saw you live or heard the music. So, cheerleader for you, so you know? Cool. <laughs> well, he was the only one that we met up with in person and actually like worked together with as well, which was really cool because, again, uh, everyone's in like New York or L.A. or blah, blah, blah. Um, so, yeah, he was like literally our first experience of like, you know, no history. Let's jump in. And let, like I got to play drums while we wrote the song. I literally begged people for that and he let me do it so <laughs> it was so fun um and uh tom myers our buddy went over to his place solo while we were gone finished drums out and now they're like best friends i think <laughs> so yeah it's been amazing um well you all have gotten to play together for a few years now but returning with these batches of songs you know to play them live does it feel a little bit different because it was such a collaborative process creating them for the record now being able to play them and fashion them live is that i think fun? we I think we all grew up somewhere else, but we really grew into ourselves in Nashville, Tennessee, mm -hmm. which is a very specific place where, you know, if you look into the history of it, there's no like, I don't know what I'm allowed to say, but you can't half-ass things very much you in this city. It. So, uh, you know, the rule is, uh, hey, can you write a song? Heck yeah. Can you play the song? Wow, look at you. Can you record it and make me love it? Amazing. Can you get a band and play that thing? So cool. All right. Stop caring about songs and just write them and move on and just do it, you know. So mm. did it feel different? Yeah, absolutely. But that's because every song should feel different. You should try to personify what you're making and send it off into its life, you know. But for us, it's like that is never a hang up or a long process. Most of our songs are like three, four days of us working Perfect. on them because why would we, you know what I mean? It's mm. like you have to let it out. You have to keep doing it. So. Uh, it was not weird for us to write songs and do the final steps of writing the songs, which is bringing them to a stage. And, you know, and then you go from there. You're like, why is this stage here? I don't really care about it. There's people there and you go that way. So for us, it's very natural. And I'm very proud of that. It's a collaborative thing in itself to be able to say that kind of stuff. Yeah. Well, I know a lot of people are looking forward to seeing you on Thursday night at The Beast. 
the Basement East. And uh, thanks to the guys who nabbed somehow the coolest name that was never taken. I was like, okie dokie. Weren't they? No? That's the band name? That goes to David Fisher, the fish man. <laughs> Cred. We also father. keep trying to connect with Oakley Dokley online they and they talk to ISIS. us. They, they just everything. don't care. We'll see what we can do as your yeah, local be great. with your music station. Where the, you can hear Okie Dokie and Tyler Creator. I almost, see, totally agree. I almost corrected not you. Not Oakley Dokley. <laughs> Take that, guys. Well, there, we, we, did play, we did play Austin City Limits Festival a couple years ago, and the Okie Dokie Brothers were there, which is like a group that plays songs for children and yeah, stuff. Children. But they were, like, they were like our people. Like They were our vibe. You know, We accidentally <laughs> got their check. And we were like, whoa, this is way better than ours. <laughs> <laughs> and we were like, I wonder if they'll notice. <laughs> and uh, and we like ran into them in the backstage area. And they're like literally with their, with their kids and stuff. And they're just like, are you okie dokie? And I was like, are you the okie dokie brothers? They're like, when's this fight going down? <laughs> and I was just like, woo, we're the same. Um, so much love to the okie dokie brothers. Yeah, they're out there. Oakley dokley. And you found us out story. Come arm wrestle us. <laughs> Hope it doesn't come to that. Well, thanks guys for being up here. We hope to have you again, neighbors and friends of WNXP. Cool. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye.